Hi everyone and welcome to the third episode of our podcast series Mini Beast Minutes for Northeast National Insect Week. Today we are joined by our special guest Craig McAdam from the insect conservation organization Bug Life. Craig is the conservation director of Bug Life and has been studying insects for over 25 years. He specializes in the study of freshwater insects ranging from the mayflies to the stoneflies and caddisflies. In addition to his research on these animals, Craig also looks at how global warming is harming these important creatures. Along with these duties, Craig is also a member of the Riverfly Partnership and offers workshops on how to tell our freshwater insects apart. Let's have a listen and see what brilliant freshwater insect facts Craig is going to tell us about today. everyone and welcome to our third episode of Mini Beast Minutes. I'm Liana and along with my lovely friend and co-host Jack, today we'll be chatting to the very cool Craig McAdam from Bug Life. Thank you so much Craig for joining us. We're so excited to have you here. It's great to be here. Thanks Liana. Thanks Jack. Thank you again Craig and today we're going to be chatting about a topic that Craig knows an awful lot about and that is freshwater insects. So to start us off, Craig, can you tell us what your favourite freshwater insect is and why? Wow, that's a difficult question. Um, uh, I've seen some amazing insects, invertebrates, freshwater invertebrates, um, in my time studying them. I've seen sort of, you know, um, dolphin fly adults the size of your finger in Japan. They were pretty cool. Um, you know, uh, oh, um, I think probably in the UK, in Scotland, my favourite would probably be one of the big stoneflies, maybe Perla bipunctata. It's a really large stonefly, it's about 35 millimetres long as an adult. Um, it uh, lives in amongst the stones at the side of the river. Um, it takes three and a half years to develop, so it's in, the, in there for a long time. It's got a big, powerful sort of nymph underneath the water, feeds on other invertebrates and things. It's got some really cool things it does as well. So it um, when when they're out in the on the bank as adults, the males are short winged, so they, they can't really fly very well. Um, so they just scuttle about scuttle about in the the stones. But to find a mate, they drum to each other. So they have a little so they they, they quiver their their abdomen, the end of their abdomen, and drum it. I've got a, a clip of it here actually somewhere. That's the male drumming and then the female replying. So and then they just get closer and closer until they find each other. And you, if you imagine doing that in uh, in such a noisy environment as the side of the river, it's just really cool that they can they can do that. Yeah, that that, that is really, that's really cool. I mean, I didn't even realize they they did something like that. So that's that's amazing. Um, personally, my favorite uh, insect, freshwater insect, is the pond skater because of how you know delicately when they're actually going across the, the water, they seem to balance mm. along the top. I think it's such a beautiful movement. Um, but I was wondering, how do pond skaters manage to move across the water surface so easily? So, well, first off, how do they st stand on the water surface? Um, well, they've got uh, hairs on their legs, which are really fine. Um, they repel water, um, but they also spread the weight. So they're able to put their legs on the water and if if you actually watch them, they've got their, their leg flattened out slightly, and it's these hairs that they're standing on rather than the, the leg itself. And the, the water, they're getting repelled off the water. And then they stand like that, and then their middle legs they use as oars, and they use them, so they're actually stabilizing themselves with their front and back legs and using the middle legs as uh, oars to scoot about the water. Well, that almost seems like the insect equivalent of a superpower. But I've also heard that some freshwater insects can be classified as bioindicators. So can you explain for us what this means and how you can identify some of the most common bioindicators here in the Northeast? Um, okay, well, a, bio, a bioindicator is uh, a species that indicates what's happening in the water. So that stonefly I'm talking about, it lives for three and a half years uh, in the water. If there's any sort of pollution incident, they'll get wiped out. So the, if you've got those in your water, um, the, the water's been pretty good for three years, you know, up to three years time. 
And lots of other things um, can indicate other things, not just water pollution, you can get indicators of siltation, acidification, um, you name it. And um, there's, there's a whole different type of indices that have been produced, so sort of these scoring systems that um, you can use what you find in the river, tell you what's happening in the river. Mm -hmm. And yeah, another one of these um, important bioindicators is the caddisfly larvae. And mm -hmm. caddisfly larvae are unusual um, because they live as baby larvae within a case. Could you tell us about this caddisfly larvae and its underwater case? Yeah, so not all of them live in a case. Um, there's two different main, main, two main types of caddisfly. There's, there's the case caddis that you're talking about there, which create a case and live in there. Um, throughout their, their life and in this caseless caddis that um, create a little shelter that they stay in or around and catch food in it um, but they actually roam about uh, more on, the, on the, the bed of the river and then there is a third type the rhyacophilids which um, they don't make a case or, or make a shelter they just roam about but they all pupate they all make a shelter a, a, a little sort of case out of bones to um, uh, to pupate in um, when they when they need to develop into an adult, and the case is made out of a, a silk-like substance, which they then stick stones onto, um, or bits of vegetation, or even you know in some rivers you can actually see bits of plastic in there, which is quite you know shocking that you, could, you these things are actually picking up our waste and using them in their their shelters. They um, they they come in all different shapes and sizes and. That's usually specific to the species, so you can tell a lot about what species you've got by the the, um, the case that they make. However, they do change their case as they go. Sometimes they'll change the style of their case. They might put an extension on that's a brick extension instead of a, a wooden extension. You know that sort of thing as they grow, um, because they've got to live in there for um, up to a year. Well, these caddis flies are undeniably fantastic, but another freshwater bioindicator people may come across is the mayfly. And these insects usually emerge in large groups called swarms, but can you tell us, Craig, why exactly is this? So they don't, actually, they don't necessarily emerge in large groups, but the swarms that you see inside the water are actually the males um, lecking, just like a, you know, you get capacale lecking and, and black grouse lecking, insects do it as well. And they're they're doing a, a circular swarm that's going up and down like that. So they'll fly up the way, and then they'll float down the way, and they'll keep doing that. And um, they're waiting for a, a female to come look for a mate. And the female flies into that swarm and gets grabbed by the the male. The male's got very long legs, and pull, um, it puts its legs up over the the wings of the the female, and immobilizes her. And as they fall out of the swarm, they they mate. And by the time they get to the bottom of the, the, the ground or back to the water surface or whatever, the female's mated and goes off and lays her eggs and the male is pretty much dead. It's, it's just going to, you know, it's not got very much longer to live. Um, so they're emerging, some will emerge in large numbers. Um, so the, some of the early season flies like the March brown, Rithrogena germanica, hatches in huge numbers on the River Tweed. Um, but others will come out, you know, throughout the day or at specific times of the day as well. So. But the swarms you see are, are, the, are the mating swarms. And, the, and in other parts of the world, in, the, in America, you get huge mating swarms. You get 18 trillion individuals uh, coming off the water at the same time and all swarming and attracted to lights. And, you know, they, they use snow plows to get them off the road. It's quite spectacular. Yeah, I didn't realise that the swarms were that big in America. I think I've seen a couple of documentaries where, you know, cars have been absolutely coated by yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, referring back to the bioindicators, they're clearly very important, but aside from their use as a bioindicator, why else do we need freshwater insects? Well, um, they provide a huge number of different ecosystem services. So, um, these are services that we either use or they help um, improve the environment around about us. Um, so, for instance, um, they're, they're great food for birds and fish, um, even humans. You know, one of the other big swarms is on Lake Victoria in Africa and uh, locals actually collect up the, the mayflies and midges that come off the water and make them into little patties and, and it's a really good source of protein for them. Um, they, as they graze on the, the bed they take up nutrients and they, re they recycle nutrients if you like. Um, they purify water by, by um, their filtration, some of them. 
Um, and, you know, caddis with their cases will actually bind up the bed as well. So this will affect um, um, sediment transport and things like that. And um, the burrowing insects, they dig into the bed of the, the river or the stream or the or, or loch and um, they actually allow water to get into the bed. So it's, it's all about aeration in that sense as well. So they provide all these different little services, all add up to a big, big benefit to us. I can't believe they're so versatile. And I think you've shown us that these insects are very important creatures. But sadly, as your research has found, climate change is harming these species. But I was wondering, how can we help save these insects? Is there anything that we can do to prevent this from occurring, despite us not being scientists? Uh, well, climate change is a huge issue. We've probably not got enough time to get into it just now. But I mean, the, the sort of impacts on, on fresh waters uh, from climate change is, is warming water, um, less water. Uh, at times or more water in, in, in floods and a lot of the actions are actions on a big scale you know um, we you know we need to manage our land better we need to make sure that we're not taking too much water out of the out of the rivers we can look at the, the uplands and make sure that um, we are uh, making sure that peat bogs are are uh, are functioning properly and keeping water up there so there's more water during the, the, the summer months the river level down too low um, we can look at buffer strips that to shade the the water and keep it, it cooler. Um, lots of things, and and we ourselves can use less water. You know, the less water we use uh, coming out of our tap means less water and more water in the rivers. Um, also, yeah, you referred before as well about the caddisfly larvae wrapping themselves, you know, with pieces of plastic. Mm -hmm. Would us, you know, recycling? and you know being more aware of when we're dumping our rubbish do you think that would help kind of stop processes like these absolutely i mean i think if we're a bit more aware of where our waste goes um you know it'll help the whole environment not just the freshwater environment um yeah. you know we 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 use a lot of plastics and and you know we use a lot of disposable items the more that we can use non-disposable or reusable items the better, um, but also thinking about our use of of pesticides, for instance. Um, you know, we use lots of pesticides in, in our gardens, and one thing that we've been interested in is uh, um, the effect of dog and cat flea treatments on river invertebrates, because these are systemic um, pesticides that are come through the dog or the cat and or get washed off the dog or the cat and end up in our water. And uh, we, you know we can have quite high concentrations of these chemicals. Oh, okay. So that's us unfortunately running out of time. But I'd quickly like to ask one more question, if you don't mind. So, do you have any tips for people who are planning to go search for all these fantastic insects in the water? Um, stay safe. <laughs> don't fall in. <laughs> um, but no, you can you can look in any sort of water. So you can have a. a pond in your garden and and have midge larvae and things in there or, or dragonflies if you're really lucky damselflies um, uh, I often take with me a little plastic sieve little kitchen sieve with me and you know you can just have that and just have a little dig about in a in a stream or a pond or whatever and see what's what's there and just have a look have a look there's lots of resources online that you can see you can use to find out what you've found and the field studies council do some great very simple guides to freshwater insects. If you want to do a bit more, you know, the Freshwater Biological Association have um, books and things that you can really get into it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think, you know, take those tips into mind when you're doing the Backyard Bio Blitz, which is part of our event. Um, definitely keep safe, that's very yeah. important. Yeah. Um, but that's all we have time for today. Fantastic. So thank you so much again, Craig, for all, all your interesting facts and taking the time to talk to us. And if you liked this podcast and you want to know some more interesting stuff about freshwater insects, you can have a look at the bug life link we've included in the description below. Thank you again, Craig. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. Happy National Insect Week. Thanks. Bye.